It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be talking about measures of center and variability as we look at box plots, dot plots, and find range in IQR and mean and mad. We begin today by going over our lesson objectives. We have two. First, we will identify measures of centers and variability of data sets that are displayed in dot plots and box plots. We will also compare measures of centers and variability. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about today as we proceed through the lesson. How can you compare data sets using measures of center and measures of variability? Let's begin by reviewing a box plot, or also known as a box and whisker plot. So here we have a box plot or a box and whisker plot, and we have a number line with a title. So this is showing us math test scores, and we have our box and our whiskers. By definition, a box plot is a graph that displays the highest and lowest quarters of data as whiskers and the middle two quarters of the data as a box and the median. So we have our whiskers and then we have our box and inside we have our median. So this is pretty evenly spread out, meaning the whiskers are almost or are the identical size. They don't need to be. This whisker could be small or large. This box could be smaller or larger. And this line could be skewed to the left or skewed to the right. So as we look at this, we want to talk about the highest value on a box plot. That is the maximum value in your data set. And the right side, the end of your whisker, marks the maximum. Your lowest is the other thing we're going to talk about. That tells you the minimum value in the data set, and that is the end of the left side of it, the end of that whisker. Then we know about the middle two quarters. We have the lower quartile, which is the start of the box, and the upper quartile, which is the end of the box. And then we have our median, which is the line inside the box. It's not necessarily the middle of the box. Here it appears to be but it doesn't have to be. This median could be right here, it could be over here. So remember, the median is just the line inside the box. One thing to note, when you look at a box plot or a box and whisker plot, if you aren't given the data set that it represents, there are only two specific data items that you know in the data set. That is the minimum value that starts your whisker and the maximum value that ends your whisker on the right side. The median could be the average of two values. So this may or may not be a score in the set of data. So again, the minimum value and the maximum value are the only two specific data items you know in the data set if you're not given the data set. Now let's talk about a dot plot. A dot plot is also referred to as a line plot. We have the same thing here. Our data set is showing math review test scores. And here we have X's instead of dots. I wanted to show you that there's some, you know, variety of things that you could see. This X could be a dot. By definition, a dot plot or a line plot is a graphical device that summarizes data by the number of dots above each data value on the horizontal axis. So our horizontal axis is this number line here telling us our math review test scores. So this means a student got a 52, a student got a 60, three students got a 64, two students a 72, four students scored 76, one had an 80, three scored 84, one scored 88, and two scored a 92. Once again, we can see our minimum and our maximum value we can see here that our maximum two students scored that, only one scored the minimum. We're going to review measures of center. Measures of center are an average, a single value that is used to represent a collection of data using median and mean. So we have two measures of center that we're going to talk about, median and mean. By definition, median is the middle number and a set of numbers that are listed in order. 
and the mean is the arithmetic average of a distribution obtained by adding the scores and then dividing by the number of scores. We'll use these and find these further in the video. Measures of variability. They are how spread out the values are from each other and from the mean using range, IQR, and MAD. So there's three types of measures of variability that we're going to use today range, IQR, and MAD. By definition, range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. IQR is the range of the middle half of the data set. And the MAD is the average distance between each data value and the mean. Let's find median. So we know it's the middle number in a set of numbers that are listed in order. Here we don't have a data set, but we have a box plot. And we've learned that our median is the line inside the box. So we can see here that in this data set, graphed as a box plot, that our median is 72. So that's not the average score. That just means when I listed all these numbers, all the test scores from this class in order, that the middle number, middle score, was a 72. So we know that there were as many scores below 72 as there were above 72. If we look at a dot plot or a line plot and we want to find the median, we have to take our dots, add them up, and divide them in half. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have eight test, 18 test scores. So half of 18 is 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then the other half, another 9. So we know that our median was 76. So we can see that a dot plot or a line plot puts our data in order from least to greatest, and visually we can find our median. It's not as easy to see as in a box and whiskers, but it's pretty easy to figure out. When we talk about mean, you can't find mean or the average when you're given a box plot unless you're given the data set. So we're going to talk about mean today using our dot plot. So here we have all of the test scores that were given. Mean is the arithmetic average of the distribution obtained by adding the scores and dividing by the number of scores. So we're going to find the sum of all. So that I found this number by adding 52 plus 60 plus 64 plus 64 plus 64, 72, 72, and I kept going and added these all up for a sum of 1,356. Now we already had counted these when we were finding the median, so I know I'm going to divide by 18 student test scores. When I use my calculator and I divide, I get 75.3 repeating. So we're going to round and say that our average is a 75 for this class on these test scores on the review. Now we want to talk about range. That is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So as we discussed earlier, we're going to find the range as maximum, subtract, minimum. So our maximum on our box plot is that furthest, the end of that whisker to the right. So we have a 92. And we're going to subtract our minimum value, which on this box plot, it's the end of the whisker for a 52. When we subtract 52 from 92, we get 40. So the range of scores is 40 points from 52 to 92. Very visible on a box plot. We can also talk about range in the same way on a dot plot. So we're going to again find our range by identifying our maximum 92 and visually we can see our minimum 52. When we subtract we're going to get the same score of a range is 40. Now let's talk about IQR. IQR only comes into play when we look at a box and whisker. 
We could take our dot plot and we could dissect it into four sections, but it's much easier to see and typically only talked about with a box plot or a box and whisker. That's the range of the middle half of the data set. So really, it's the range or the distance between the beginning and the end of our box because these show our middle quartile. So the IQR is where you're going to find by finding the upper quartile and subtracting the lower quartile, and that will give you the IQR, which we call the interquartile range. So it's the range from the beginning of the box to the end of the box. So we see that our upper quartile here is an 80, and our lower quartile here is a 64. 80 subtract 64 gives us a value of 16. So the range of scores in the middle from the lower quartile to the upper quartile is 16 points. All right, mad. This is what, <laughs> no pun intended, but this is what makes my students mad. Finding the average distance between each data value and the mean. So statistically, and it's an important thing to consider, it tells you a lot about a data set when you're comparing. However, it's time consuming to figure out. So here, let's try this. We gotta first remember that our mean we already calculated was we added all these values up and divided by 18 and got 75. So to find the MAD, I'm gonna use a table. So I put all the scores from my dot plot here, and then we're gonna put the mean. So the average test score was a 75 for the whole set. Now we're gonna find the differences. So to find the differences, I'm gonna subtract. And it's the absolute difference, mean absolute difference. So we're gonna go 75, subtract 52, I got 23. The difference here is 15, the difference here is 11, and you go down and collect all of those. So MAD, sometimes people call it the second average. So I'm gonna take all of these differences, I'm going to add them up. So to find the MAD, I'm gonna add up the sum of the differences, which is 160, divide by the number of differences I have, which is 18. And when I do that, I get 8.8 .8 repeating. So here, we're gonna say that the mat of the math test scores is nine. This tells us that each test score is about nine points away from the mean. So the reason that you would wanna know this is you wanna know how spread out. If I tell you that the class average was a 75, you wanna know how close to the average all the other scores were. So this is a pretty big average, but for a test, that means that the average was 75 and that all the scores were less than 10 points away from that average, not all of them, but on average. So we have a couple that were lower and a couple that were higher, but for the most part, the scores were within nine points of the average. So that's pretty good. Now let's talk about comparing data sets now that we know how to find different parts of data. Your math teacher compared student scores on the math review test and the math test. This double box plot shows the distributions of the data collected. So now we have two box plots stacked on the same number line. This box plot shows the results of the review and this box plot shows the results of taking the test. We're asked, what is the difference of the ranges of the data for the math review test scores and the range of the math test scores? So the difference of the ranges is what we're looking to find. So before we can find the difference, we have to find the ranges. So when we go to find the range of the review, we're gonna take and we're gonna find the maximum and the minimum. So the maximum was 84, subtract 52, and we get 32. Now let's talk about the test. We're going to that box plot. The maximum score on the, that to find the range on the test was 92. The minimum was 64. I subtract and I get a range of 28. So 32 subtract 28 is four. So the difference of the ranges was four points. Now let's compare these data sets. We have two line plots. These line plots show how students scored on the math review test and the math test. 
So here we have the data shown to us in a dot plot or a line plot instead of the box and whisker plot. We're asked, what is the total number of students whose scores falls between the means of the two line plots? So we have to go find the averages on the review and on the test. So let's go and find the averages so we can find the difference between or how many scores fell between the means. So the mean of the review, we're going to have added all of these scores together. When we add 52 plus 60 and keep going and add these all up, we get 692. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this one we have 10 scores. We're going to divide by 10, which gives us 69.2. Now to find the mean of the test, we're going to add 64, 64, 72, 76. Keep going, add them all up for a sum of 784. We have 10 scores. And when you divide by 10, you get a mean of 78.4. That's pretty good. The math review test had an average of 69.2, and the math test had an average of 78.4. So you can see they went up almost 10 points. So they want to know how many students fell between these two averages. So let's come up here, and we want to know between, so greater than 69, but less than 78. So here's 3, and here greater than 69, less than 78. So we can see that one, two, three, four, five students fell between the two averages. So five students scored better than the average on the review, but less than the average on the test. Now it's your turn. These line plots show how students scored on the math review test and the math test. We have the review in a line plot and the math test in a line plot. Based on the line plots, the mean absolute deviation of the math review test scores is, and we're going to drag and drop one of these phrases and compare it to the mean absolute deviation of the math test. So here's where you pause the video, you go and compare the MAD, and come back and hit play to see my work. Welcome back. So let's find our solution. So we're going to clear our screen here. We're going to find the scores on the review. So here are our scores. I took them from our dot plot. Our mean was 69.2. We added up all the scores and divided. And then we got to find all the differences. Then when we add up our differences to find our MAD, we add these all up, we get a sum of 84. We divide by 10 and we get that we have a mean absolute deviation of the review of 8.4. So that means students scored generally with an A points of the average. We had an average of 69. Now let's bring our scores of our test. And these were our 10 test scores. The average was a 78.4 on the test. The differences for the, from the average for each of the test scores is here in this column. Remember, we subtract in the absolute value of that result. And we have MAD, add up all your differences. We're going to divide by 10 because we had 10 scores, and we get 7.52. So on average, on the test, the scores were closer to the mean. So on average, on the test, everybody's score was within 7.5 points of the average. So we had a better distribution of scores on the test than we did on the review. So that tells me the review helped. And so we are going to say, because we had 8.4 as a MAD on the review and 7.52 on the test, that the math review test scores, that mean absolute deviation was greater than the mean absolute deviation of the math test. So we had a greater spread of data on the review test than we did on the actual test, which is good. We want to see that reduced. So there you have it. That's measures of center when we look at box plots and dot plots and measures of variability as well. Range, IQR, mean, and MAD. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.